Hey everybody, my name is Cassie and today we're going to have some Poke Doodles fun. Let's get started. Today we're going to be doing some Copic coloring using this adorable witch on a broomstick gnome. This is from the Poke Doodles gnome trick or treat collection. I've printed my gnome out on some Nina Classic Crest solar white cardstock. I have another piece of paper underneath it just to protect my work surface. We're going to start with these skin tones and these are the colors I will be using. You can go ahead and screenshot that if you want to keep notes. I know this isn't the traditional color for skin, but I figured it'd be fun for the witch. I'm going to go ahead and start by coloring all of my skin pieces in a base coat of the YG93. I'm not doing anything fancy here, I'm just giving myself a nice base layer of color to start my blending on. Once that's done, I'm going to go in with my darkest color, which is a BG96. I'm going to add that into the shadows. Underneath the nose, where the hair crosses over the nose, any place where shadows will be. I'm not trying to blend it, I just want to get a little bit of shadow in there. Next, I'm going to take my medium skin tone, which is the YG95, and I'm going to start moving my shadows up towards my highlights. You want to leave yourself a nice highlight here, don't cover all of it with your mid-tone, but you can start blending in some of those shadows. To blend all the colors together, I'm going to take my lightest skin tone again, my YG93, and cover the entire area with that color. This will help soften all of those blends between the dark, the medium, and the light colors, and even out the colors just a little bit. Sticking with traditional Halloween colors, we'll be doing a purple dress. Again, feel free to pause the video if you want to get a closer look at those colors. We're starting with our BV08. This will be our darkest color, and I'm going to go very sparingly on it. It's a very dark color, and I don't want to lose all of my line work. So I'm going in just a little bit in the deepest shadows. So behind the hair, under the hand, anywhere where those deep shadows are going to fall. This is just blocking in our basic shadows. If we miss a spot, it's okay. We can go back and fix that later. This is just our first pass. Moving into our second lightest, second darkest color, let's get that right, the BV17. And I'm going to start extending my shadows just a little bit. Don't get carried away. You can always go darker later, but it's hard to take back that dark color. Now we're going to move into a BV02. This is the bulk of our color. This is our mid-tone, so you can be a little bit more generous with this. Just make sure you're leaving plenty of space for your highlight. Speaking of our highlights, let's add some BV00. With this color, I'm just going over the entire dress, all of the purple area. This helps to start blend in those shadows so that there's a softer transition between colors. Right now, it doesn't look very good, but we'll fix that in our next pass through. I'm going back in with my BV08. Now that I know where I really want my shadows to fall, I can be a little bit more generous with my shadows. I'm going to blend that out with the BV17 and work my way back through all of the colors, blending as I go. Second layer of color is where you want to get your soft blends. Now that my purple is established, I want to brighten the whole color up, so I'm going to glaze over with a V05. I'm not trying to blend, I'm just doing a quick pass over all of the purple areas. For the hat, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with the dress. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and let you listen to some music while I color.
Next up, a pumpkin orange for our cape. Our darkest color for this blend is the E09. Technically, this is in the brown family, not the orange family, but I find it gives a nice richness to the shadows of oranges. So I'm going in with my deepest, darkest shadows. Then I'm going to switch to my YR18 and start blending that out just a little bit. Again, we're not going to go too far too fast. E97 is another brown color, but it's on the very orange side of brown, and it gives a nice mellow mid-tone. YR00 is our lightest color, so we're going to go ahead and blend all of that together with that color. And again, we're going to repeat that process, going in with our darkest color and moving towards our lightest color, this time focusing on getting some good blends. I'm going to be more generous this time with my YR18. It's the one true orange color that we have in this blend, and if we don't get enough of it, the cape is going to look peach instead of orange. While doing my oranges, I got a little carried away and went past the black line, so we're going to fix that with some clear blender. This is the zero color in Copics, and I'm using the chisel end. And I start just past where the color is going outside the line and color towards the line. You're trying to push the color back into the inside of the line. And you can see it took care of the problem. Now let's jump back in with our oranges to do the hat band. I like to give my hat bands a little bit of a crease in the center, like the ribbon is folding a little bit. I do that by laying down two little triangles on each side of the ribbon with the darkest color and then blending that out. I realized at this point that I missed a little piece of the dress tucked behind her hair, so I'm going to go in with the BV08 and just fill that in. Next up we have our yellows. I forgot to put the cap down when I started coloring this. This is the Y21 and I'm doing the same thing that I did with the skin tone and doing a color blocked area first with the lightest color. I'm also going to color the stars in at the same time. My darkest yellow is an E87, and because the straw on the broomstick is straw and not a solid object, I'm using the flicking motion to try and establish clumps of straw. I'm not trying to blend this color in as much. Now this is the E84, and I'm going to follow those same clumps and start softening the shadows out just a little bit while still establishing the different clumps of straw. We'll follow that with a Y26. This will help bring the warmth of yellow back into it. And again, our highlight is our Y21 to help soften all of those edges out. The stars are solid objects, so I'll go ahead and shade them more like I did the dress and the hat. Keeping in mind my light source and where the shadows should fall. Next up is a white shadow, so this is a W3, and I'm just putting a little bit down on the hills. This will give me the shadowing for the white stripe. For the orange stripes, I'm doing YR18 and E09. This is a really small area, so you don't need to worry about blending too much. These are the colors I intend to use for the brown wood, but I do add another color in there at the end. So we're going to start with the E89, and that will be our shadow. This is a very dark color, and it blends in with all of the other dark shadow colors that we have, so go very light-handed with this color. Next, we're going to go in with the E87, and I added more of that. I still felt that the brown was a little bit too dark and was getting lost in the dark of the dress, so I grabbed my E84, and I'm going to add a highlight and blend in those dark colors with this color to soften the color a little bit.
I finally decided to do the strings on the broom purple, but it's a small area, so I did a modified color blend, which is my BV17 and my BV02. I also lightened that up with the V05. Next, we are going to go in with our blacks, and I'm sorry I forgot to hold these up. My darkest black is the W9. This is the warm gray family. From there, we'll go down to the W8 and blend that out. And finally, our lightest black color is the W6. I left quite a bit of light area on the boots just so that you could still see the details of the black lines underneath my highlights. I'm sticking with the same warm gray colors for her hair, starting with the W6. I'm blocking in my shadows with the same flicking motion that I used on the broomstick. Next, I'm going to go in with the W8, and I'm going to go in with those same flicking motions to extend those shadows just a little bit. I'm leaving a very generous highlight at this point because I don't want the hair to get too dark. Going back to my W6, I'm going to block in some of the hair in the highlights, leaving white space in between the hairs. This will give each strand a highlight. I also want to add a little bit of color to this black because black can be a little bit flat. So I'm adding in some BV00 to my hair highlights. You won't really notice it very much, but it adds just a little bit of depth to the color. Now I'm going in with the W9 to give my darkest shadows to my hair. Again, I'm using those flicking motions. And I'm just going to keep working my way through the black colors towards my lightest color. And there we have our witch all colored up. Now my camera has been trying to adjust the lighting so that um, the witch looks darker on the screen than it really is in real life. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and try and adjust that color balance to see if I can get a brighter witch. There we go. All right. Now you're welcome to stop there if you want, but if you want a little bit of glitz, go ahead and foil your sentiment. Because I printed this on a laser printer, I can foil it with a toner reactive foil. And you get this incredible multicolored sentiment and it looks amazing. The foil that I used on this is the Deco Foil Peach Princess Foil, and it is a super fun Halloween color. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. It helps us a lot. Also, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and click that notification bell so that you know when we upload new videos. If you want to see more videos, let us know what you want to see. I hope you have a wonderful crafty day, and I'll see you next time.